I'd like to uh, shift gears now uh, and review some of the pharmacologic management that we have available, currently approved medications and those in development. We are incredibly fortunate to now have treatment opportunities for our patients with spinal muscular atrophy. Most recently, onesemnagine abaparvavec, known as Zolgensma, was approved by the FDA in May of 2019. This is a gene transfer therapy whereby an SMN1 transgene is packaged in a viral vector. In this case, adeno-associated virus type 9. And it's administered once via an intravenous infusion. The mechanism of action is such that the SMN1 transgene begins producing SMN protein, and this in turn supports the health of the motor nerves in efforts to maintain the strength of the patient. It is indicated currently for the patients under the age of two years with SMA. In 2018, there was a release of the results of the phase one START trial, reporting that all 15 patients administered AVXS 101 now on a Senegene Abaparvavec, were alive and without the need for permanent ventilation at 24 months. 11 out of 12 patients who received the currently FDA approved dose demonstrated the ability to sit unassisted for greater than or equal to five seconds. John, can you discuss the impact that this trial and this medication has had on the optimism that we experience for our patients with SMA and presented the first neuromuscular gene therapy treatment? I think the START trial was a landmark moment in neuromuscular history, certainly. Um, it has been published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and so most are quite familiar with the results if they've looked them over. Um, uh, with the caveats that this was open label, it was single center, um, but essentially what we're saying here is that patients who are symptomatic with the most severe form of SMA, infantile onset disease, are achieving motor milestones. And this is something that as a neuromuscular specialist is um, a celebration when we uh, look at this data. But for families, there's real um, practical things that are happening in the lives of these children that are just changing the experience of the disease entirely. Um, we've had data releases now of long-term follow-up from this cohort of four years um, where there is continued gain of some of the milestones um, in some of the patients um, and no patient has lost a milestone that was previously acquired so we're seeing durability now in the data cuts from this cohort. Um, and the other piece is that um, for something that has a lot of novelty to it in terms of an approach, it does tend to be well tolerated for the most part. Now we do have to be careful to acknowledge that there are issues with liver injury and transaminase elevation in some of the patients that require longer courses of steroid treatment um, and also the kind of post-viral syndrome that is seen sometimes with flu-like symptoms, vomiting, fever, um, can sometimes be an issue, especially in older patients who are treated with this IV form. Um, but um, the efficacy that we're seeing from the data is highly encouraging for the community in terms of this being a one-time intervention that makes a profound impact on the experience of the disease. Thank you for summarizing that. 